Jesus Christ. The word that we need, the word for the hour, the word that will bring transformation and change into our lives. Send it to us this morning. Holy Spirit of God, speak expressly. In the name of Jesus, we break down every barrier, Amen. every hindrance. We remove in the name of Jesus Amen. that your word will find expressions in our lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much because by the time you finish this service today, Lord, we will not be the same. This topic is really meant for those who want to go far with God. Many people prefer to stay at the periphery, but I have discovered in my few years in the Lord that when you stay at the periphery, you don't, you don't, you don't gain much. Those gold miners, they always say that when you, if you really want gold, real gold, good gold, you won't get them at the periphery. You know, it's only the gold dusts that you find at the, at the periphery, the river bank. You know, but when you're actually looking for serious gold, you have to go deep. And so, if you are not ready to, you know, for, 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 for big things in, in God, you can stay at the periphery, but if you actually want something deeper, something more, you know, because I discovered that <laughs> there is more that God has for us than what meets the eyes. You know, there is a song that normally says, I will, I will dig a little deeper, Jesus' love must be sweeter, I will dig a little deeper deeper yes you know if when you stay at the periphery you don't you don't you don't gain much from god but when you make up your mind that you are going deeper with god <laughs> you discover that there is a lot that god has for us and it will amaze you that's why by the time we finish this convention you would not wish to be an ordinary Christian. You will not wish to be a peripheral Christian. You want to take a step further in the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to open our Bible to the book of Genesis, where our text is. Genesis chapter 1. Walking in dominion. You know, dominion mandate is, is a subject that is so important in the program of God, especially in this end time. Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 26, where we started, where we read yesterday. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man. When them, let us make man. Let us make man in our image. And after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth 
and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. And God said, let us. God was discussing with the, um, uh, the, the other two members of the Trinity. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion. Let us make you know, when God was creating any other, you know, things, he didn't create them in his own image. He didn't create them in his likeness. Because man is the crown of creation. So God now said, after he has created everything for man, he now said, let us make man. Let's make him in our image. Let's make man just like us, in our image and in our likeness. So when he was about to create the, the body of man, he formed him from the earth. But when he was going to create the spirit of man, the Bible says he breathed unto him the breath of life. Hallelujah. A man became a living soul. And so we are created in his image just like God, so that we can be physical and spiritual at the same time. Hallelujah. We can operate in both dimensions. Hallelujah. Are you following me this morning? So he said, let us make man. You know, you discover that the purpose of God, the plan, you know, the plan of God can change, but the purpose of God does not change. God does not change his purpose. You know, the plan can change because it has to do with man. That's why when man fell from the garden, the purpose of God did not change because God still intends man to have dominion. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? The devil thought that after he has deceived man and everything has gone awry, he thought he has, you know, accomplished his mission. That everything is finished. But you discover that God has to change his plan. Hallelujah. But his purpose, the original purpose for man has not changed. God has not changed his, his plan and he has not changed his purpose. If God created man to have dominion, his purpose has never changed. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? You know, he has to, you know, cause a restoration whereby he has to send jesus to come into the world to come and restore back the plan has to change because if man did not fall there will not be need for salvation there won't be need for pastors there won't be need for for uh, prophets there won't be need for church hallelujah everything will just be working and working the way god planned it but because you know there is <laughs> a, a little problem that's why the plan has to change because the original plan of God was when he put man in the garden of Eden he wanted man because the garden of Eden is just a location it's a location and God wanted man to begin to reproduce the kind of Eden in every other part you know as it's expanding hallelujah are you following what I'm saying? That's the plan of man. So that man can replicate what he saw in the garden. Garden will not just be its limitation. Are you following what I'm saying this morning? The garden of Eden will not be its location, its uh, jurisdiction alone. It will be able to spread and bring about the same thing that happens in the garden every other, way, every other part. That is the plan of God. That is the original plan of God. Hallelujah. So God still intends man to have dominion. So that's why he said, okay, let's make man. You know, the crown. You know, when you look at the book of Psalm 8, he was talking about, he said, you know, when the psalmist was, he was talking, he said, what is man? That you are mindful 
of him. Why did you even create man? You know, because man is the, is the crown of God's creation. He has to make everything ready. He did not create man until he has put everything that the man will need in the Garden of Eden. He deposited gold. If you read through the, the book of Genesis, he put gold there. He put everything that man will ever need. The, 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 um, you know, the animals, everything. So that man will just come there and will just enjoy and enjoy his life. And there will be no suffering at any time. Do you know that Adam, he was naked. He was covered with the glory of God. He, he was, he, you know, that's why he didn't even know that he was naked in the Garden of Eden. He didn't know because the glory of God so much covered him to the point that he wasn't wearing any clothes. And the weather was not against him. It's not like after the fall of man that everything is now fighting against man. The weather is fighting against man. There will, you, know, you go to England now, you know that it's an adverse weather. That when you are in it, <laughs> the way the cold is, your hand will almost be, be, be folding like this. Hallelujah. That's not the way God wanted it. Because at the time when God created man, he was naked. And yet, the weather was not really working against him. Hallelujah. But it was the fall of man that caused all this thing. That even all the, the nature is working against mankind. Hallelujah. Time is up, Abby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because once time is up, I'm just going to round up. I won't go further. Let me see what you are reading now. Amen. 10.35. So, God now said, let's make man. Let them have dominion. So, it means that the dominion that God has given to man is not just, you know, an absolute dominion. It's a shared dominion. It's a dominion. He said, okay, let's make man. Let them have dominion over everything. So after God has created man, he put man in charge, and God now withdraw. And he now asked man to, okay, take charge of everything I have created. Take charge of the earth. Administrate. Legislate. Take control. Govern the earth. Hallelujah. Take care of it. He told Adam, he said, name all the animals. You know, I give you everything, but only one thing I, I don't want you to. Because he gave man his will. That's why <laughs> if you determine to go to hell, God will back you up to go there. Because he gave man a will. He wants you to do whatever you are doing for him willingly. Hallelujah. The animals can be forced to do something, but when it comes to man, he does not want to force man. That's why he didn't force us to get born again. He's not going to force you to be committed. It's you that have to make up your mind that, look, I want to go further with God. Look, I don't want to stay at the periphery. Look, I want more of God. Everything that you ever want from God, it has to be by, you know, your sheer will. What you want to do because God does, that's why God does not want man to dominate another man. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? So he does not want man to dominate another man because God himself did not dominate us. So if wherever you find anybody dominating another person is devilish, it's not of God. Hallelujah. Because God did not give you control over any man are you following what i'm saying now so it's very so it's a shared dominion god now said okay take charge of the earth and god now restricted himself to the third heaven are you following what i'm saying now he restricted himself to the third heaven that's why people always wonder everything that is happening around the world now why is God not doing anything about it? Why did God leave everything to go a wire? Why is God not doing things? Some of us have been saying, why is God allowing Nigeria to be what it is now? Hallelujah. 
because he has already given us dominion. He has already made us to be in charge of everything. And that's why God will always say, I need a man. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? You'll be wondering that how can God of heaven be needing a man? When God will say, well, I can't do anything. My hands are tied. There are certain things that when you address to God, I was telling them, is it here or is it on Wednesday or some, some, sometimes? There are some of the prayers that we address to God that is not meant to be addressed to God. Are you following what I'm saying now? That's why some prayers, when you pray it, you address it to God, God is not going to answer. Because they are not meant to be addressed to God. They are meant to be addressed to the situation. Are you following what I'm saying now? That's why, because God now said, let us make man in our own image and let us have, have dominion. Now, God now withdraw himself and is legislating, giving instruction in heaven, even though he still controls the earth, his eyes are on the earth, but he has given, he says the heaven of heaven belongs to God, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Is that not what the Bible says? He has given the earth to the children of men. And if the children of men that God has given the earth to, if they refuse to do anything about it, <laughs> it's their business. Hallelujah. And that's why if we want God to do something substantial, if we want God to do something great, we have to involve him. We have to call him into the scene. We have to invite him and give him the right of way to do whatever he wants to do. Even in our own personal life. Hallelujah. Are you, have, are you getting understanding of what we are saying this morning? That's why it's so important that if we fold our hands, if we say we are not going to do anything, the devil will just take over and will just continue to do whatever he wants to do. That's why the devil himself, he knows. He knows that spirit beings, they don't have authority on the earth. They cannot do anything a spirit cannot just come and be walking around that you see with your physical eyes here on earth. That's why they will always look for a body to possess. They want a body to express themselves through. Is that not so? So demons and evil spirits, if they want to operate, you are welcome. <laughs> Praise God. If they want to operate on the earth, what do they do? They look for body. They look for human vessel. So everything that is happening around the world today, there will always be a human vessel. Those people who have released themselves for the enemy to use to carry out his assignment. Look at Hitler. The devil just suddenly got inside of him and he wants to destroy the whole world. So if, if the devil wants to do anything, is if he comes here, he won't be able to function because he does not have a right to be on the earth, to do anything on earth, unless he finds a man. So also, if God wants to do something, somebody said, is, is God not your almighty God? Can he not do everything that he can do? Yes, he is almighty God, but the heart he has given to the children of men to legislate, to control, to dominate, and to carry out governance over there. So it's very important that we know that this dominion mandate is the heartbeat of God. It's something that God wants us Christians to learn about and begin to operate in it proficiently to the point that we'll be able to carry out God's divine mandate on this earth. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? So when he now said, let them take control. Let's make man in our image. Let's make man in our likeness. And let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Hallelujah. Is that not what the Bible says? When it talks about the fish of the sea, it's not just talking about the shark, the whales, and all the things that are in the sea. You know that. Hallelujah. It's talking about the sea itself. Do you know that the sea is where the abundance came out from? You don't know. 
When the Bible says, when God was, let somebody open to that uh, and read verse 20 for us of that first, uh, first chapter of Genesis, chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1 verse 20 if you find it please quickly read it for us you can project it for us and God said listen let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven he said let the waters so the abundance the Bible talks about the abundance of the sea the abundance comes from the sea. That's why the devil tends to want to dominate the sea. That's why <laughs> there are lots of treasure in the sea. And that's why the enemy loves to take control. But God said, I give you dominion over the fish of the sea. He's not just talking about the fish inside. He's talking about the abundance of that sea. And that's why you have all this mammal spirit, marine spirit, and all kinds of things, because they know that there is abundance in the sea. And that if man does not discover it, they sit on top of it, and they don't want man to take hold of that abundance. The Bible tells us that he created, he said, let all these creeping things, the fowls of the air, let them come out of the waters. Hallelujah. And they came out of the waters. And so the devil knows that this earth, this place, is where treasures are. So he wants to sit on, on top of it so that man will not discover it and he will not be able to take control of it. But from this time on, your eyes will be open. That's why you find all kinds of money. All those, go and see all those, those white garment people and all the rest of them. They will go and build their, their this thing bes beside waters, beside the, the rivers. Are you following what I'm saying now? They, you know, all permanence of the marine spirit. They will, they will go and worship. They will go and take bath. You know, all kinds of things happen around it because they have discovered that there is something about the sea that man has not discovered. And so they are taking advantage of it. And so God said, we have dominion over it. Even the spirit that operates in the sea. That's why you are not afraid of man-made spirit. You are not afraid. That's why if man does not take their dominion, if they don't take authority over those things, those spirits, they will be in control. They will relate the abundance that's supposed to come to man. It will not come out. Hallelujah. Am I talking to us this morning? So God said, I've given you dominion over the fish of the sea. Over everything that God created that comes from the sea. He talks about giving you dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air. You know the air. The air. You know we have three heavens. Three heavens. The first heaven, which is just the atmospheric heaven, and we have the, the second heaven, and the third heaven, which belongs to God. The third heaven is where God rules and reigns. Hallelujah. <laughs> Any over there in heaven, in the third heaven, is God, instruction from God that rules there. Satan that tends to want to, 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 to do something else, it was cast out of there. God rules and reigns there. Hallelujah. The second heaven is the, you know, is the place where demons and evil spirit, that's their, you know, are you following what I'm saying now? And if you don't know how to legislate, even in this, in this area, demons and evil spirit, they come to oppress people and you don't know how to do, deal with them. So you have to have understanding that God has given us dominion even in that realm. That's where demons are. That's where they are hierarchy. You know that demons are in hierarchy. They have their governmental system that they have set over there. That if you don't know, and if you don't know how to take control from there, <laughs> you, will, you, you will enjoy your life. Because demons, they tend to want to, you know, operate there and oppress human beings. But God said he has given us dominion, even in that realm. Hallelujah. So that as a child of God, you must know that when you are praying, <laughs> that's why I said there are some prayers that is not supposed to be addressed to God. There are some prayers that you are supposed to address to the principalities and powers and wicked rulers in high places. If you don't address those prayers to them, you address it to God, it's not going to find any answer. 
Hallelujah. So from that, this time on, what? when you are praying, you begin to pray with understanding. Are you following what I'm saying? Some of us, the problem that we are going through in our life, in our marriages, in our home, they are orchestrated from the kingdom of darkness. This hierarchy there. That you, as a child of God, you have to rise up and begin to take authority from that realm. Because the Bible says we are seated far above principalities and powers, and you take, look down and begin to take authority. You foul spirits dwelling in the heavenlies, controlling my home, controlling my life. There are some spirits that they project sickness into people's body. That you have to learn how to begin to take authority and begin to declare that you foul spirit or human spirit cooperating with evil spirit to project evil into the life of men. <laughs> you won't have any place in my life. Are you following what I'm saying now? Because it's so important. If you don't learn those things, the devil will just rub your, 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 your nose on the floor to the point that you will think that God is... You know, many people are even giving up on prayer today because they feel that prayer is not being answered. Whereas, we are supposed to pray with understanding. We are supposed to pray according to the knowledge of the word of God. We are supposed to take our place, knowing fully well of who you are. Yesterday we heard that the woman, the wise woman, she knew who she was. And she was able to rise up and say, this is who I am. You as a child of God, you must know and understand that this is who you are in Christ. Because if you don't have, when you don't have understanding, the devil knows. He knows. And when you have understanding, why do demons obey some people, some Christians, and he does not obey some Christians? It's because he knows that you don't have understanding of what you are saying. That's why he, he refused to answer. But by the time you, 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 you arm yourself with knowledge, by the time you arm yourself with understanding, you know who you are. You know you are where you are standing. You'll be able to rise up and say, devil, enough in my home. You can't continue. Further have you gone, further shall you go. Are you following what I'm saying this morning? Praise the name of the Lord. So he said, I've given you dominion over the, the fowls of the air. It's not just the bird that is flying there. Demons, hierarchies there that you stand. <laughs> you know, recently we just finished. We were praying, fasting and praying. And, and suddenly one of the nights, you know, because I just made up my mind from 12 to 3. I will spend some time. Look, learn to... Learn to take advantage of night time. Because these are the period when <laughs> there's so much activity in the realm of the spirit. Things are happening there. Hallelujah. The, you know, the many times God will wake you up to pray. And you just turn yourself and sleep. It's not the time to sleep. Oh. This is the time for us to begin to learn some things about spiritual things. At night time like that, between 12 and, and 3 a.m. That's why there is a lot of traffic in the, in the realm of the spirit. A lot of activities are going on. And that when you rise up and you begin to pray. So I now make up my mind. Anytime I'm off duty, I will just, you know, <laughs> you know, the first few days, it was an encounter in the realm of the spirits. Hallelujah. I, there was one particular one. It was the afternoon I slept. And the, as soon as we opened the gates it, in that realm, I had that revelation. I just saw the man. He was so furious. And he began to charge charge at me and i said in the name of jesus he came as if i saw you know the person coming through the window he was so furious in, in in a rage and he was saying you know who are you this and that and i now pointed to him said, in the name of jesus i just saw something like a flash of light and he just covered it and he just disappeared and that was the end of it hallelujah are you following what i'm saying i know that Big but they don't have to water on cocoa in the realm of the spirit. And that was what happened. Are you following what I'm saying now? You know, there are times when you strike some things in the realm of the spirit. And the devil knows. So he wants to raise opposition. That's why I learn not to be afraid of anything. I just make up my mind. I said there's no fear anywhere. I don't want to be afraid of anything. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? You are not supposed... I just discovered that many people are so... They are so afraid of everything. You read something in the, uh, on the internet and then you become afraid. And any loot you pay in your body, instead of rising up and say, you pay, <laughs> the devil says, uh, it's the cancer now. It has started. And then you begin to meditate on those things. 
and you meditate on the point until demons enter into that, into that pain and turn it to something else before you know it. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Most of these great sicknesses and diseases that, 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 that afflict people, it didn't start in that big way. It started small. Most of the problems that breaks homes, it just starts in a small way and we just leave it, you know, until the devil builds himself inside that problem and it becomes a great problem. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? Praise the Lord. <laughs> about the last one which is the and then I'll round up because I know time is against us give you dominion over the fowls of the air and over the earth three, three realms over the sea so you know as a child of God you have authority you have dominion over the sea the abundance thereof. You have authority in the air. Demons and evil spirits that operate in the air and over the earth. Look, this earth that we are standing upon <laughs> is a mystery. You don't know. <laughs> this earth that we are walking on, <laughs> it's a mystery. That's why everything originates. Even the body of man, it came from the earth. Is that not so? The Bible says God created man. He, he formed the body of man. When man dies, he's inside the earth. They will bury him. If anything is going to grow, you put it on the, on the ground. <laughs> There's nothing you put inside it. It's just nowadays that you put manure inside that will make it to grow. But the thing will just grow. Nothing, it's not that you put battery there or something that will make it to grow. Is that not so? Something is just growing from the ground. Hallelujah. Every house that you build, you don't build it on the, you know, Furufu, no. You build it on the earth. Everything has connection to the earth. It means that the earth is so important. Every treasure that God has put, they are loaded in the earth. Talk about all the precious stones, all the good things of life. There, there are still some things that God has put on this earth that has not yet been discovered by man. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? So it's a, it's a, it's a mystery. And God said, I give you dominion. <laughs> That's why you must pray this prayer that, Father, this land must yield to me. The Bible talks about the earth yielding forth an increase for um, uh, Isaac, hundredfold. Others were planting there, nothing was coming out. But this man planted on the earth and he yielded hundredfold in a place of famine. Hallelujah. <laughs> you get to any city, you get to any, you know, people said Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is bad. But until you pray this prayer and you command the land to yield your own for you, it won't do it. I'm telling you the fact. Anywhere you go to, you must learn to take advantage of the fact that God has given you dominion. That's why the Bible says, wherever the soul of your feet shall touch, many people don't believe it. <laughs> you take hold of it and you say, I'm stepping on this land. I take dominion over it. And I command it to yield for me, to yield for my family, to yield for my children, to yield an increase. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there are two, two earths that we are talking about. The earth of these of this ones that we see. And there is another earth, which is your body. You know, it's made up of the earth. Eh? The treasure in this earthen vessel is even more than the treasures on this earth. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? The Bible says that he has put treasure, given us treasures in this earthen vessels. There are many of us. That's why they said the greatest, the most, you know, the, the, the graveyard. Is the richest place in this world. Richest place. 
where they have buried treasures. Ah, you are going to pray today that this earth and this earth that I'm carrying about, ah, it must yield to me. You know, there are treasures that you have not discovered yet. There are those people that don't even know God, that they are just walking by the covenant of the Old Testament. All the people like Steve Job, all those people, they are people that have taken advantage. Look at what they are doing. All the Microsoft, all the Facebook, all the other things, they are something that was bought by some, some people that is launching them into all over the world. People have just opened Facebook everywhere, all over like that. And yet, you know, they are just operating in the old covenant. How much more those of us who have a better covenant based upon better promises? We are going to rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for yourself this morning. You are going to pray. You know, you know I know that many homes that have pri been privileged to cancel, most of the time, is financial problem. When you want to sweat to quarrel with families, it's financial problem. Because one financial problem or the other has, is causing rift between the families. Because there's not enough. And so the devil is taking advantage. So you are going to pray this morning. God has given us dominion. I'm just able to to preach my message halfway in the church, you know, before I go back, I will, if God gives me opportunity, I will just continue from there. We're going to pray this morning. Father, I thank you. And that's what I want to, lastly, I want to tell you, so that when you know that you have this, you cannot afford to walk in carnality. You cannot afford to be an ordinary Christian. You cannot afford to be a half-baked Christian that they will be begging to come to church to grow up, to develop, to study the word of God, to pray, to you know, engage in spiritual things. You cannot afford to be a kind of Christian who will just be spending your life frivolously, going all about neglecting spiritual things at the expense, you know, you know of um, you neglecting spiritual things and just spending your life anyhow, spending your time on things that does not matter. Things that does not have value, even when we get to the kingdom of God. We're going to pray this morning. Lord, help me. You know, some of us, we need encounter with the spirit of God. That we change our life. That we change our orientation. That we make us to begin to, I mean, reorganize our priorities. Begin to, I mean, you know, reorganize our priorities. You begin to say, well, this one is not important. I just make up my mind. There are some things that are not important right now. There are some things that are more important to me right now, which are spiritual things. Because the more I know about God, <coughs> the better for me and the better for the people that God has assigned to my life. Hallelujah. I want you to close your eyes this morning and begin to talk to God. Lord, enough of, the, of this, this unseriousness about my Christian life. We were told yesterday, this woman that, you know, that, 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 that we were told about, she was a faithful woman. She was a, a woman of peace. She was a woman, you know, you know, who is a mother in Israel. A woman who has developed herself. A woman who is a blessing in her own city. A woman through whom, you know, God was able to deliver a whole city. Because she prepared herself. I want you to talk to God this morning. Lord, I don't want to. I'm tired of being an ordinary Christian. Help me, Holy Spirit of God. I need an encounter with you during this convention. An encounter of a lifetime that will change my life, that will reorganize my orientation in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help me. I want to walk in dominion. I want to walk in dominion. I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, oppress in that dominion that you have given to me. I don't want to walk as an ordinary Christian. I don't want the enemy to cheat me, to cheat my family. I don't want the enemy to steal what God has already ordained for me from the foundation of the world. And I want you to begin to command the earth to begin to yield forth for you. The earth to yield forth for you. The earth to yield forth for you. You are on this earth. Father, I pray that this land, they will begin to yield for me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ah, I, I will not be an ordinary Christian. I will not just be blessed. I will be a blessing to my world. 
a blessing to my generation, a blessing to my family, a blessing to my children, a blessing all around in the mighty name of Jesus. Walk in me. The Bible says it is God who is at work in us, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Ask God to do his good pleasure in your life. Ask God to change you. Ask God to transform you. Ask God to give you an encounter of a lifetime. If you don't know Christ, or you are not even sure you are born again, I want you to call upon God this morning. Some of us are not born again. And that's why, you know, we can't grow as Christians. Because you don't, you don't even have what it takes, you know, to walk in God. You are not sure of your salvation. This is the time to, you need to call upon God and say, God, please help me. Help me, I want to know you. I want to know you experientially. I want to know you personally. I want to know you. I don't want to be unserious. I don't want to just merry go round. I don't want to do a Christianity. Christianity to Munodoko. I don't want to do that. I want a Christianity ah, that will affect my generation. I want my life to be a vessel, my, my life to be an emblem of the glory of God. Talk to the Lord this morning. I want you to talk to the Lord this morning. We don't have a lot of time. I want you to pray when you get back home. Where are you supposed to take authority in the heavenlies? As you begin to obey God, as you begin to walk in the ways of God. The Bible says when your own obedience is complete, you'll be able to avenge all disobedience. As you walk with God, as you obey God. Father, we thank you this morning. 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 We praise your name. We worship your name. We glorify your name. We thank you for your word you have sent to us this morning. The Bible says you made us in your own image and in your likeness. You have given us dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every creeping thing that creepeth creeping upon the earth. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because you are calling us into, into deeper, deeper work with you where we'll be able to exhibit, where we'll be able to, you know, you know where we'll be able to, to, to operate in that realm of dominion that you have given to us, so that life will not cheat us, so that the enemy will not take advantage of us, so that the enemy will not take advantage of our ignorance, so that we begin to walk in the realm of the spirit. We begin to legislate, we begin to govern, we begin to take control where we are supposed to take control. We begin to uh, uh, you know, achieve what God wants us to achieve in our lifetime so that we'll be able to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. So that we'll be able to touch lives as we want us to touch life. So that we'll be able to uh, you know, finish what you have already committed to our hands. Father, we exalt your name. We give you all the glory this morning. Lord, we exalt you. I want you to pray that, God, I want an encounter with you in this convention. Lord, I want an encounter. Lord, God of heaven, just like Jacob encountered you. Lord, that his life was not the same. I pray this morning. I pray in this program. I don't want to go empty-handed. I don't want to go back home the same way I've gone. I don't want to go back empty. I want to go back fully loaded. Fully loaded to go back to the world, to go and dominate. To go and dominate that I can God can find me a ready vessel in his hand. God is looking for a man, he's looking for a prepared vessel. Are you preparing yourself as a prepared vessel? A vessel that God can use, a vessel that is yielded to the Almighty God, a vessel that God can depend upon. Father, we exalt you this morning. <speaking in Spanish> Li proboko soko toko je ke li boko ria kazo ko toko zo jo ko te ke li boko ria kaza je ke te ke se ke te ke te ke ria. There is a deeper dimension. Kaya kato ye ke ria. There is a deeper realm. There is a deeper walk that I'm calling you, my children, to walk in. Deeper, deeper dimension, deeper walk. Deeper understanding of my ways, deeper understanding of my counsel, deeper understanding that I'm calling you, my children, to come. Come, 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 come. Come and walk with me. 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 What I have in store for you is far beyond what you are looking at right now. Ah, many of you, you are looking down on yourself. Many of you, you are thinking, is this me? This me? 
this little me, what can I achieve? What can I accomplish? Ah, Maseke di Bokoria. It is me that is working in you. Working in you, both to will and to do of my good pleasure. In you and through you. I want to use 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 you. I need a man. I need a vessel. I need a ready vessel. A ready vessel. A ready vessel. A yielded vessel. A vessel that can use. Ah, I am in need of a man. Will you be the man? Will you be the woman? Will you be? Father, we thank you, Lord. I want you to just make commitment to God and say, Lord, you have found a ready vessel. You have found a ready vessel. A ready vessel. A ready vessel, Lord. Lord, I yield myself to you. Glorify yourself, Lord. Thank you so much. Lord, we just thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, all the praises. Lord, I just submit myself to you and I commit all my presence to your hands, oh God. We give you the right of way. <laughs> willingly and willingly. Willingly and willingly. We surrender. We ask you, oh God, take us deeper still. Take us further still. <laughs> further and further. Further and further. Further and further. Further than our imagination can carry us. You will take us, oh God. We yield ourselves. We yield our members. Not as instrument of sin, but as instrument of honor in your hand, oh God. Take her hold of our lives and use it for your glory. Use us according to your will, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.